In this video, I will talk about tax return in Germany. I will start with the breakdown of how much I got back from my taxes in the past five years so that you know what you can expect from your tax return in Germany. Then I will continue with the German tax software called Elsta or Elster. I will introduce your next favorite word, Pauschale. It means lump sum or flat rate in German. And this is the amount you can actually write off without having to provide any receipts. And I will share an overview of some tax apps in Germany for easier tax return purposes. Before we start, I'm not a tax advisor. I'm an engineer in Germany and I just love numbers. That's why <laughs> I like talking about taxes, but this is not official tax advice. Let's get started. So in the past five years, I got 4,276 euros back from my tax return in Germany. This year is 2024. I haven't done it for 2023. I, I think I will <laughs> show the breakdown I do. In 2022, I got 1,159 euros back. In 2021, I got 2,812 euros back. And as a working student, I got back 66 euros in 2020, 140 euros in 2019, and 99 euros in 2018. So it's still good money, but not as much as while I was working full time in Germany. Let's move on to the tax software Elster, your new tax BFF. Okay, I will try the share screen thing. Here is Elster in German. I will switch to English for video purposes, but it says it's translated with Deeple, so it's um, not that professional and you need to be careful. Just warning you, okay? Good. So, um, if you're logging in for the first time, you need to create a user account and it has like its own security stuff and you need to go through the login options, registration, getting the certificate and then logging in. So there are a few options. You just need to follow the steps to create an initial user if you're logging in for the first time. So assuming you already have this, you just go to the login part after creating your user. And uh, I'm just going to select my personal file, password, um, and then login and switch to English again. So my submitted forms are here for the past years. Um, 19, 18, 21, 20, and 22. The order doesn't really matter. You can do your tax declaration in the past four years, moving backwards. So you can do, for example, this year for 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. So in the past four years, you can just do it all at once if you want to. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Okay, um, so let me show you an example for the year that I got like a thousand euros back, which was a normal year. The year I got over 2000 euros back as it was my first job and I started in the half of the year. So I wasn't working for a full year. That's why I was in a different tax bracket. And that's why I got so much back and I had to move for my new job. I was also studying for a while, so it had a lot of amounts. A normal year would be like in 2022. Let me just show you a breakdown of what I did in that year to get my taxes back. This is like what the form looks like. Um, you just need to, okay, let me just show you how it looks. Um, you go over chapters, um, giving myself as an example, I'm a single person living on my own and I don't have any kids. So my tax class is one, the worst one you can possibly have. I pay a lot of taxes. And Anlage N, it's um, for employees in Germany. So that's my real name. 
I might blur it or I might just put it out there. I haven't decided yet. Here is a breakdown of what I've written in that form that year. Hauptvordruck, this is the general information, tax ID and banking information. Then it was another topic, Anlage Haushaltsnahmeaufwendung. This was actually how much I paid for the services I got from my rent. And you can also write the stuff for Hausmeister or for cleaning stuff in your building in that section as well. Then I had the Anlage N. This is like the basic employee stuff. First of all, things about my salary for that year. Then my favorite part, writing off a lot of things here, like the Entfernungspauschale, the transportation stuff, and what I bought for my home office things, and then the Pauschale for home office that year. I did like some courses online and did some trainings. That money I also written down here. Other stuff that I could write off. Then I added this one because of my business trips. And the last thing, this is the rent insurance. This is the healthcare and care insurance. It's also written down yearly document for tax declaration. And the last thing was here. I also paid um, a few other insurances like Haftpflichtversicherung in Germany. You can also take a look at what else you can write off from your taxes, but that's what I did for the year and I got a little over a thousand euros back. Let's just start a form from scratch so that you can guess how it continues, my forms. Okay, I'm just gonna go my forms and then start new forms. So, the normal thing is income tax. I don't have a corporate, I'm just like a boring employee person. And this would be SA, Einkommensteuererklärung unbeschränkter Steuerpflicht. So it means that I don't have to declare my taxes, I do just to get my money back. So that's the thing we're going to talk about in this video. And a lot of German, not very well translated. The important thing is you pick the right year. So let's do it for last year, for example. And I'm gonna click OK. So if you have done your tax declaration before, you can actually get the information from the years before which is very useful so that you can like copy similar stuff, but I'm just gonna do without that. And I don't know why this is not in English. I do not know. Maybe they don't have it in English. Sorry. Anyway, so you need to like um, write your own name and ID number and then so on if you want to go with the assistant if you want to go without this is the thing the important thing is already checked what you need as a private person is Anlage N this one right there and everything else it depends on your situation just like a boring basic tax declaration will be these stuff and that's it if you have any of the following stuff here you just you can read for example what it is mean over there under help and then pick the one that works for you for example one year i had also given belastung it is the stuff that is over six percent of your yearly income that is, for example, connected with your healthcare. I had a shoulder injury. I was getting a lot of treatments for it. So it kind of went over my budget for that year. So I had to fill this. And also I, I included like my new glasses and that contacts, that kind of healthcare stuff. I read through whatever is under that. Or maybe like you have a mobility premium and you would have to write this here if you're working in one city and living in the other one you could be in this category you can just write through if you are one in one of those categories but the usual boring thing is these three and moving on 
next. If you have your Lohnsteuerbescheinigung, it asks that. Um, you can just fill that through or if you don't have it, yeah, I can pick myself because I already have it and this is the one at person A, I'm the only person. And this system can actually get the Bescheinigung, get the form if you put your tax ID in it and the system can actually find it for you. I'm just gonna go directly to the form, direct some formula, and just going to fill everything on my own, like the overall stuff, uh, my bank account, and stuff like that. I think I don't need it as for the like boring declaration. And yeah, in Anlage N, I can add myself here and then put everything under here, like um, for home office, Tagespauschale, Anwendung Arbeitszimmer, Entfernungspauschale, like the distance between your place and your office, if you have to go there, you can write everything off here, or Vorsorgeaufwand means like, for example, your healthcare or some of the insurances you pay, uh, also including Pflegeversicherung. Um, anyways, you can write everything off here. Let me just share an overview with you in my Notion. So, for home office, you could actually get maximum of 600 euros back, meaning 120 days, but five euros each day. And they increased that, that amount in 2023 to six euros per day. So you can get a bit more for that year, but for the years before, um, it's five euros actually. You can check those amounts depending on the year. I usually just Google it. Then transportation, it's called Entfernungspauschale. And this amount is multiplied with the distance you have from your home to your office. And if you have like public transportation tickets, the right amount you spend for that, you can also write that down. But if you're getting to your office with your car, you should just write the distance. And then the pauschal is like 30 cents per kilometer. The system calculates it like that. Werbungskostenpauschal, this is like the um, office material stuff is 110 euros without providing any receipts. If you bought like a printer for your home office, for example, that is over this amount, you can always write over this amount, obviously. But if you bought something like for 50 euros, you can just write 110 instead. They don't ask for any receipts. For banking, if you don't pay anything to your bank, you can still write off 16 euros per year. If you pay more than that, for example, I pay more than that, I write like 60, 80 euros or something. For telephone or internet costs, you can just write off 120 without providing any receipts whatsoever. I'm going to share a link below where you can find a lot of this flat rates, for writing off from your taxes in Germany. What else, what else? Okay, let me just show you around with different tax apps. So what I use is like Studentensteuer. That was a nice app. Taxfix is also good. Studentensteuererklärung.de, this was nice. Wundertax. Okay, so I use, for example, Taxfix just to see what I can get from my taxes. I was just curious. And it's really easy to use. And it's a nice app, I would say. Uh, another thing I used was studentensteuererklärung.de. It says like Wundertax for Studierende. Then I apparently use Wundertax or Wundertax. Um, this was actually one of 
my favorite apps a good interface where i could put a lot of more stuff compared to taxfix because it asked me more questions about my own life so that that can add a few more fields i really like it but i mean i could use like taxfix studentensteuer if you're a student or wandertax those are like the three things i used so far those were very good if you do not want to use elster because it sounds complicated or for language barriers and stuff like wonder tax has an english version as well taxfix also has an english version so if you are not happy with elster maybe you don't not you don't speak german that well your online tax office although it's english when i started my form it turned out to be german again so if you do not want to deal with german for your taxes you can also use some other software in english hope this video helps and hope you get lots and lots of your own money back from your taxes thanks so much if you like this video you can also like this and hope to see you next time subscribe for more see you